Have you ever heard of a walking simulator in a maze with a flashlight while being chased by a big monster? Oh, you have? Well, that's because I just described most indie horror games. And I've never made one, so today I'll challenge myself to make the most cliche horror game that I can think of, and I have to finish it before 3am. Otherwise, well, I'm a bad game developer. The rules are that I'm not allowed to build any tension with a creepy atmosphere, just cheap jump scares, and the main mechanic is... Walking. Here's my super original idea. Mascot horror is very big at the moment, so I obviously have to hop on that trend. And if you live under a rock, or you just play good games, all you need to know is that there's an 8 foot tall stuffed animal who wants to violently tear you apart for no apparent reason. You are in a maze in a children's play area, trying to turn off all the lights while being pursued by a monster. And don't forget, the player has to be holding a flashlight. I'll tell you the amazing backstory for the game later. I'll start at 10pm and give myself 5 hours to do this. Th oh, oh, it just turned 10. Okay, guess I should get started. I want to start with the monster, so I'll look up some reference photos. Here I have some pictures from Poppy Playtime, FNAF, and Slenderman, and I'll try to combine all of these to make the ultimate horror mascot. So I'll start sketching out some ideas. Oh no, I can't draw. Okay, I guess I'll just move on to sculpting. Guys, I can't even sculpt. Okay, I give up. And please, before I show you this, I need to remind you that this is terrifying, so please <laughs> Please don't laugh when you see it. After that abomination I just created, this texture needs to do wonders, so I'll start with some sort of fabric monster which likes to eat people at night. You know, just classic monster things. I'm not going to show you the final monster just yet because I think it's going to scare you guys too much, so let's get started on the game. You know, that monster only took me 51 minutes. What do all these games have in common? First person, so I'll make a quick first person player and uh, we should probably add a floor. And on the topic of floor, we need to add an area for the monster to bully you around and what better place than a really colorful area? Just like, well, 99% of mascot horror games. And let's not forget that we also must make this place as confusing to navigate as possible and make every area look almost the same, throwing any environmental storytelling right out the window. And I also gotta make sure that I don't accidentally create a tense atmosphere because god forbid I actually scare the player with anything but a cheap jump scare. I'll block out the map now just to get a feel for the game, and then I'll get started on the monster AI, which has to be as basic as possible. Guys, I just drew this amazing plan for the map, so I'll start modeling it. Now it's done. But isn't something a little bit off? Oh yeah, I gotta turn off the, uh, the, the, the sun. <laughs> Stupid me, how could I forget that? And now it's a little too dark, so guess what? We need a flashlight! Because it's not an indie horror game without one of those. But we can't get brutally murdered yet, so let's work on the monster. Luckily, I'm sort of a master at making bad AI, so this should be pretty simple. The most generic way to do a monster is for it to know your exact coordinates at all times and have it ruthlessly sprint towards you and give you a scare. And obviously, I'll have to make sure that its navigational abilities are parallel to that of a newborn child. Oh guys, you know the AI is gonna be good when it's only 12 lines of code. With that said, let's go over the code to make sure you guys understand it. The monster knows where the player is, the monster walks towards the player. Done. That's it. Amazing. Now you can get chased, but, well, he gets a little shy around people, guys, so he kind of just stands there. But this is a horror game, so I'll teach him how to tear your face off. And now, I'd like to introduce the monster. Oh, sorry, that was the subscribe button, which you really shouldn't be afraid of, so go on, go click it. Yeah, there you go. Alright, here's the monster. He's not bad, but... What's one of these games without a really goofy walk animation? So I threw one together and it just makes everything look so... good. Honestly, 90% of Steam devs would probably stop here and put the game up for the price of two AAA games, but I'll keep going. Now it's time to add an objective. It's been 2 hours and 30 minutes, so we're just about halfway through the challenge now. This game needs a really weak backstory, just enough to satisfy the mind of a 5 year old, and I think I picked the perfect one. This poor poor monster is very angry because he finds it really hard to sleep with the lights on, so you've been tasked with helping the monster fall asleep by turning all the lights off in the building. Man, I need to write a movie or something. I'm gonna put light switches all around the map that you have to press in order to turn off the lights in the room. I'll place these in the bigger rooms around the map, but it's a little too easy to find the buttons, don't you think? So I need to make some obstacles that I can put around the map. I took a page out of Slenderman's book and I put trees everywhere. This way I can mix the natural fear of being in the woods at night with the not so natural fear of being in a children's daycare. I'm just kidding. I'll make some tables, chairs, 
playing cubes, whatever these are called. And in true asset flip fashion, I can't have too much variation in the obstacles, otherwise the game would be too immersive, and we definitely don't want that. I'm also going to make sure none of the assets have a consistent art style to really hammer home the Unity Asset Store aesthetic. I did some mining off camera, and I remembered something very important that I forgot to mention. The prop placement has to make complete 100% sense. Just how I put this chair on top of the table here, or put this chair in the middle of a hallway, and put a bunch of little tables surrounding a massive chair. And now for the part I've been dreading. I have to make some monster sounds. We can't have the monster be too terrifying because it would scare away our target audience of 7 year old kids, but I will make him breathe how I breathe after a flight of stairs. Yeah, I'll cut that part out. I also need some footsteps, and considering he's fabric and soaked in blood, I'll make his footsteps squelch. I'll also add some reverb, because reverb equals scary. We all know this. For example... Subscribe. Subscribe. See how much more terrifying that was? But we're still missing something very important. The heavily distorted jump scare sound effect that plays at like six times as loud as every other sound in the game. But it's 2am, so I need to make this quick. <laughs> Perfection. And now I need to add some extra screen effects to finish everything off, and while I'm doing that, I'll ask you kindly to subscribe, or else I'll find your address and send this monster to your house tonight. But we still need a name for the game, so this is where we need to get a little silly. We have to name the monster something childish, so let's go with Stinky, because I assume his breath would be very stinky. And for the name of the game, looking at my competition such as Garten of Ban Ban and Poppy Playtime, I'll go with Stinky is Sleepy. It's up on itch.io if you want to play it for yourself. Be warned, it is absolutely terrifying. It's 2.34 in the morning, and I'm finally finished, so I'm gonna play it live in front of you guys. So, as you can see here, I've made a very nice main menu. Lots of color. The play button doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> give me a minute. As you can see here, I've actually fixed the main menu button. Alright, so after some technical difficulties, we're here. So you start off in this beautiful um, corridor here. There's Stinky. Uh, wow, he's a lot faster than I remember. Uh, okay. So you just go around this corner and boom. See the light switch? Yep. Gotta go over to it. Press it. Boom. Turn off the light. Wow, I balanced this game poorly. Okay, so I think you guys get the gist of the game. If you want to go play it, feel free. I also think it would be hilarious if we could get Markiplier to somehow play this, so please start putting this game into his comments. This is about everything you've come to expect over the last 10 years from horror games, so I should probably put this on Steam for like $30. Wow, I'm really good at making bad games, but guess what? I'm also good at making good games, which is why you should wishlist Omnipresence on Steam. It's a very unique first-person shooter, so maybe watch this video here and see if you like it.